Good morning, my beautiful, amazing artists. Thank you so much for joining me again here today. Um, it's super early in the morning. I think it's like 5.30. Got the idea. I finally got the idea for the final curiosities layout, and it's going to be pretty big. Um, but I'm going to try to keep it super compact again, and maybe I can um, uh, do it similar to the, uh, the circus tent and how I kept that that compact. That's what I'm thinking about. Um, it's, it's basically going to take you inside of a tent somehow. Uh, this video is uploading. The second part is still in editing. This guy, I did fix this door and then I went through and tweaked some colors on everything and that will be another video. Um, the repairs and the adjustments. You have to do repairs and adjustments, and you, uh, or you find a product that just kind of works perfectly right, then you go back and you use it on the other pages. No page is ever finished until the book is, is done, right? All right. <laughs> okay. Um, it's another layout. I'm going to do another layout. Uh, I think my coffee is done. I need coffee. It's getting added to your drawing. This is a very nice wood cigar box. Metal hinges. It's got a metal, and it, it smells lovely. Mm, I love the smell of cedar. I really do. I'm also adding in four corks. Um, if you saw my embossed box videos, see the angel box, I think it was made out of this exact same type of size of box. The rose box was uh, diagonal, a different type of box. This was, uh, I love this box. It's going in your drawing with the four legs if you want to use them. The, the, the corks do smell like wine. They are wine corks. I didn't drink the wine. I just got it from somebody else and now I'm regifting it to you. So, be forewarned, there's wine corks in here. They're for legs or for any other cool projects that you want to make out of them. You can do some cool stuff with wine corks. Drawing. Thank you so much. New subscribers. So awesome to see you. Um, please, please, please. You do not get entered into the drawing though until you make a comment. And all the comment has to stay is new subscriber liked. And since you're already in the comment section, you don't have to say comment because I can see that you're there. So for a new subscriber, you get a point for the comment and the like together. You got a like and comment, and you get a point. You can have two points for being a new subscriber. Um, if you're a good neighbor, you get a point. If you um, subscribe a friend, you get a point. If you go to, oh, if you add this video to your playlists and you leave a comment that says add to playlist on their channel and, uh, I just got a messenger message that says, do you drink coffee? I've never talked to that person before in my life, but of course I drink coffee. Where is that? At rules. Add it to a playlist on your Facebook channel or YouTube channel. I'm sorry. It's five o'clock in the morning. I want to get to this idea and I know I need to record this. And The rules will be in the comments for all the different ways for you to get points. Each video you can get probably up to five points. I do need my 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 wonderful people who are already a part of my tribe, part of my heart. That, that some of you guys aren't, aren't making it enough comments. I want to make sure that we get your names in there. Okay. All right, my uh, dear, sweet, amazing friends. Yes. This prize drive is a shameless subscriber drive. Absolutely is. Um, I just really need to get those numbers up and the more activity, the more that YouTube will see me. Uh, there are still 38% of you that watch me that have not subscribed. So that's, you know, a, 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 that's, that's a large amount of people. Help a girl out, and I will give you a cigar box. And I'm going to start listing what's actually in the bag underneath each video, too. 
This goes until January 15th. So this is a Jerry Lewis telethon part of it. It goes from December 31st to January 15th. You could actually go back to other videos if you have not seen them. And you can comment and like and share on those things too. All right. I'm going to get to work. Get to work. Chat soon. All right. Bye. Hi guys, how's it going? Stephanie Ani here in Concord, California. I have no idea what kind of day it is outside. It feels kind of cold in here. It's probably nicer out there. This place gets cold and it just stays cold. Okay, uh, this is going to be our uh, curiosities. I have a couple different ways that I could do this. Let me show you outside of the book. We just repaired this guy, or just put the stair, uh, stars on here seconds ago. Get that video in a couple days. Try not to have any glue goobers in there. Okay, so we know that our pages are 8 by 5 We're going to set this guy aside, and we're going to pull in some cardstock. And part of me wonders if I shouldn't have some of that heavier cardstock again as the uh, most background piece. I don't know yet. We'll see. But I'm grabbing out three sheets of this. Use whatever cardstock you have. This is Craft Collection Premium Cardstock Paper Bag, 100-pound uh, cover. There's a link to this in my Amazon. Um, use what you have. It just has to have some weight to it. it doesn't have to have a ton of weight. It has to have some weight. Okay. So I know that I need two 8x5s for sure. Uh, let's go with the 8. Cut the eight here first. Doesn't matter. Make sure your lines are lined up. Now we do know that our page is a little bit wider than five inches. It's probably closer to five and a half, but this gives us room in here. I think I do want to use heavier, the heavier, um, I'm, I'm going to make out a flip out. And I think it'd be kind of cool to tr see if I could do two flip outs on each side. <laughs> Cause why just do one? That's boring. But if you can make it accordion out, that's interesting. It's probably going to take up, uh, so we have to think about room here in the book. So if we look at this, this one has four, and I'm thinking about doing six. It takes up a quarter inch of room, half inch, half inch of room there. So it'll take up more than that. I will have to probably remove quite a few signatures in order to insert something that large. So if I think about this, I have to consider using something that takes up less room than that heavier cardstock. I like the heavier uh, it's chipboard. It's not cardstock. I like using the heavier chipboard for the stability. Now, the circus tent absolutely needed that stability for when it opens up. See? So I want to do 
an open page like this again, but I want to do one more open here. Do a huge accordion. And do uh, tent entries on each one. So I have the tent here that'll lift up have the advertisement here that'll lift down, and then have all of those people on that page. All the tattooed ladies on one page. So then do this, the tent page up, this page down, and then have all the snake ladies. Do this page up, this page down, and have all the, did I say the fortune teller? Um, you know, and then this page up, this page down for the strong man this page up, this page down for all the other random curiosities. Six of them. Takes up a lot of space. It folds up very compactly and very nicely into the book. This one I think I only had to take out a couple of signatures. So if I construct this properly, I might be able to just do it in that space. Or do it with just the pages that I have here. I don't think it's going to work. So you know that I made this guy nice and sturdy. I glued another double to it. So this is actually four pages here. Oh, more. Five with this uh, piece of chipboard on there. I'm looking at this because I don't have any more of that popcorn paper, but if I use this for the tent construction, that would look really cool. Okay, that'll work. Good idea. Flip out and flip out. Okay. There's our center signature. <laughs> okay, I just had a robo call there. Cut us off. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to construct it in the book. And the reason for that, I will be, mm, I will be making things stronger with the chipboard, with the cardstock. Sorry, not the chipboard, with the cardstock. Uh, what I'm going to do though is, you see how this is a center? This is actually one, uh, two pages here of, of signature. So we're going to pull that out. And then this is another two pages within that signature. And we're going to pull that out. So we're kind of down at the bare bones of this signature. I'm sure this is the beginning of the next one right there. So we will want to glue those two together. We're just going to do that right off the bat. Oh, we're going to make that a four and we're going to make that much, much stronger there. Let's just do that real quick. Uh, this is going to be hard on the book, as usual. <laughs> Everything we do is hard on the book, uh, and we're pushing construction. So uh, instead of using... I do want the pictures to be a part of this book. 
Uh, with the last book, I didn't use that many actual images of people. Uh, but the images that I did use were important. So with this book, I am using more images than the last one. The first book was very image heavy. My second altered book was very construction heavy. And this third altered book, I want to kind of uh, mingle the two. The reason for that uh, is I think with the circus book, uh, you know, it's hard to, it's hard for me to talk about the circus without involving uh, the people and the animals and the environment. So I'm creating the environment uh, and then we are working on placing the people within the environment. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am a bit of a history buff. My family has always been very interested in history. So for me, uh, you know, honoring those people, uh, you know, the historical figures don't get seen all the time. All right, right off the bat, we are going to uh, fix this seam. You see how those are very loose? Now, we've created a lot of space just in that signature. There's a, uh, there's a good, healthy amount of space. We have a very strong back page. We have a very strong first page. We've got you know, an eighth of an inch in there, a couple millimeters to work with. Tiny bits. I don't know oh, the terminology here. Hold on. We are just putting. It, oh wait, that is a tear. There. That oh, will be okay here. Just a sec. Kind of want to put an additional piece in here. This is the lightest weight fabric that I have, though. So it's, it's good in this application. More things will be put over the top of this. What? I don't know yet. I haven't gotten to there. First, I'm figuring out construction because that's how I do it. This is going to take like lines. I don't like things to be there when they're not supposed to be there. Like this line, this fold. I don't like that. I, I couldn't get rid of it though, unfortunately, because I've tried and tried and tried. It's just there. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm tired. I want to go back to bed. Got a lunch date with one of my best girls today. I'm very excited about that. So, you guys know that I've done the uh, dual frame flip page. This is similar, except we're going to take it one step further and make a third flip out. And this will be the last of the curiosities. I'll be able to get a lot of images on there. Right? Flip, flip. It's all got to fold in. So if it's got to fold in, uh, let's do this here real quick. Our pages are five and a half wide or about 14 centimeters. Right? So, let's do some thinking. If that page is uh, five and a half wide, then we need the next page that's going to be attached to it to be only five inches. And the reason for that is we want it to fold in five inches. Then on this page, we need from here to here to be four and a half inches. I'll show you why. 
So there's her middle mark right there. Four and a half. So when this folds in, you've got a half inch there. And then when this folds in, you're going to have another half inch there. You see how much space we've already created for our seam. That's important. It's important to create that space. So I think that's a great start. So let's uh, cut the, this is going to be the bottom one. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm seeing this correct. Here, fold in. And fold out. Now, I think I might also try to put these into perspective. Don't know. That might be a little bit too much. I might be asking too much. Stephanie. <laughs> okay. So, yes, I am seeing this correctly. So, this bottom page here has to be five. Right? And this one has to be four and a half. I'm lining up the center. I'm looking at this line as it's going under here, under here, under here. Get yourself a swoopy. It's like the best tool ever. Okay. So, now. We want to make sure this is nice and steady, nice and stable. So, let me think. We're going to have a page that flips up and flips down on each section. So, for this back page, here. We're going to have a page that flips up, a page that flips down. On each individual section. So I need How am I going to do it? This top one is only going to be about a half page. It's going to have a tenth shape to it. Like this. Then the advertisement will be under it. But I don't know if I want the tent to come down to here or if I only want the tent top to come over to there. I, I don't know that yet, so I don't really want to um, assume anything. So let's go here. I need two five by eights. These are for the back flips for the back pages. Next ones that I need are going to be all right, those were five. Mm. All right. 
So I want to be sure that I'm leaving space for the folds so these are correct. This gives me a quarter inch on each side to leave space for folding. So even though this is five, I want to leave a quarter inch on each side. So we will cut the um, pieces to four and a half by eight. We need four, four and a half by eight. On this page here. Um, so this one will go here, this one will go here. But if I just decided to do the tent this size, I could just do this flip up and this flip down. Let's just do that. Because I'm I I'm still thinking about how to make this a perspective thing. Um You'll leave the full one full size. The second one that size. All right, and so for our third piece, this is four and a half, so we're going to take it by four inches by eight inches. Is this four? It is. Do I have two of those? I do. Now, this is just the scraps, okay? It's by eight. And then here and here. Awesome. So those are going to be in our final flap. This goes up, this will come down. It will just be one per page, right? This will come up, this will come down. Each one. So this guy will be here. Now, let's think about perspective. If we are looking at these first two tents, from right here, and we make this go smaller and then this goes smaller that would look kind of cool huh I think it would look really cool so let's think about this how much do we want to take off of each side so we have an 8 inch what if we make this guy six inch, take an inch off each, and then make this guy four inch, take an inch off each. That's a little bit too much, maybe. Let's start with look at this here real quick. So we're going to have to cut down those pieces, of course. So we've got eight inches here. Let's try a half inch off of each side. And then this guy will have more taken off. So that takes it to seven and a half and this to seven. I like that. So then 
We put it there. And then let's take this guy this is the seven so let's take a half inch off of the smallest piece I think I have to remove it to do that so we're going to take six and a half here and six here is that right? Not that it matters. You won't see any of that at all. <laughs> okay. So, let's pull out our gaffer's tape. I have no idea where it is. It's the best tape. Let's cut this other one real quick. Where's the other one? Okay, so the first one we're going to cut to seven. So we're going to take a half inch off of here. And we're going to take a half inch off of here. Nice sharp blade. Watch your hands. Not as sharp as it could be, but still. Okay, so that's this guy. That flap has to go that way. This flap has to stay this way. It is this one that we want to cut down. There's the smaller one. We're going to cut that to six and a half there. And we're going to cut it to six on this side. There we go. There we go. Now I can do it middle. Well, I think the middle is kind of cool. Yeah. Middle will be interesting. Tape. Dang it. Why do I... Okay. Wait, I found it. Yes, here it is. All right, this is gaffer's tape. Um, not done with swoopy yet. Oh, I've got too many things on my desk. It's, it's causing me discombobulation. This is gaffer's tape. It's very sticky, very strong, uh, but it also folds really nicely. Now, I believe this is the um, 40 yard, three inch wide tape. Now, why would I do the 40 yard? Well, it was kind of the best deal. I gave you a link to the 30 yard um, also you know get however much you want okay now I want to make sure that this is measured somewhat evenly here half inch up half inch down there got it a little bit off not an issue. Let's just cut it off. Dun, 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 dun. Why didn't I just fold it up? Oh, you know what I didn't leave, guys? I didn't leave any space for folding. So I might have to take this whole piece off. Let me see if I can. I haven't really pressed it down yet. Let's see? I didn't press it down all the way. I pressed it down somewhat. Oh, I might have to put a whole new piece on there. Leave space. In fact, let's leave let's leave that quarter inch of space in there. Let's look at that here. Make sure that when that closes all the way that we have enough space here, which we do. But we need to make sure that this building section has enough space to fold in and out. So one thing I didn't do with the circus tent, so I'm learning that. Are you guys in here even enough? Yeah. 
So I'm taking the lessons from the big top and moving it to here. All right. I um I just watched a video and and uh this particular woman had taken an image off of that person's uh, Patreon page and she had copied the artwork and put it directly into her book. I just watched this as I'm, I'm editing and I'm uploading and commenting and doing all sorts of things at the computer. I spend half my time, well over half my time at the computer. I wish I was able to spend more time here. But, uh, you know, I don't have that luxury to just be working at the table all the time. Um, I just have to say that I am putting my images of my artwork on Patreon. If I see anybody take one of my pieces of art, copy it off, and paste it into a book, I will remove you from the Patreon. And here's why. And that might sound kind of harsh, but you are not here to just copy my work here. Not at this channel. This channel is for artists who want to learn, who want to uh, become better artists. This channel is not for people to copy exactly what I'm doing. I, I don't look favorably upon that. Um, now, elements, of course, absolutely. I understand that you'll use the same colors, that you'll use similar stencils, everything else. But if you take this and just copy it and put it in your book, that's just a low-down, dirty deed. That's, that's not being creative. That's not using your intelligence to create something that can be similar, but it must be your own. We are not here to copy somebody else's work. We are here to invent and learn and push our boundaries, right? So I just want to let you know. <laughs> Don't do that on my page. Okay, so here's what I'm realizing real fast. I can't glue this to that. So this is going to have to be this inside piece here. Switching. And I will do something else simple on this page. Not that I really ever do simple, but you know, I could use a simple pocket page. I haven't really done much of those yet. Uh, so this guy I'm going to uh, fix up super quick. I'm gonna make it a three -er or a four. I'm gonna make it a four or -er, I think. A double or a triple. It's currently a double, which is two pages put together. I'm making it a triple right now by adding in one more page. It just falls in there. See how this athletic tape does this? See how the gaffer's tape holds more flat? We will be taking off that athletic tape. We will be using the gaffer's tape. It's a good stuff. Um, it's a better product uh, for this context. The athletic tape works better in the seams, I think, uh, because of its uh, water's uh, protective qualities. Uh, I don't think the gaffer's tape um, works as well in that respect. I don't know. That's kind of how I feel about it. So I don't ever claim to be an expert about construction and about tapes and adhesives. I just know the things that I like and I know the way that I like to use them. And if you don't like to do it that way, don't do it that way does not matter to me one single bit how you take care of your book.
and we can give you suggestions on how I take care of mine. All right, let's pull this guy off without hopefully destroying the pages too much. This may be a mistake to be adding these pages into here already. Oh, I'm just wanting to build and it's going to be hard to work inside the book with this. I want to build. Again, I want to leave probably about a quarter inch of space here. How oh, that's got the quarter inch of space. That's awesome. I want to do that in that center. Getting this approximately five and a half inches long because this is a six inch long space. And here. Holding it down here. Trying to make sure I've got that lined up and that lined up. I'm giving it enough of a gap. Along that very uneven edge. Okay, I'm try to line it up here a little bit. Oh, see, I just ruined that piece of gaffer's tape. It'll never stick again. Do it right. Just redo it. So hopefully uh, I was absolutely clear on that. Uh, last statement about the Patreon. I have no problem providing you with the photos of my work, but the reason why I'm putting the photos up, they are for your reference. They are not for you to <laughs> print and put in your book. Make your own art. I will. It doesn't fly with me. But I've seen some artists, you know, uh, take somebody else's artwork and change a few things and then call it their own. And again, that's uh, not right in my, uh, in my universe. Nor would that be allowed in the fine art world. It's just not, it's just not cool. Unless you're changing something drastically, but you know, something that you print out and glue down, that's not your art. It's not your work. You don't have the right to do that. So this will give us a much stiffer fold mark here. <laughs> It'll be interesting. It feels like a, a cityscape event, which, wow, it's an intense page. Okay, pull this up. Out of the way. I'm just gonna set that in there, close the book, and let it get used to being there. Set the book down on the floor. Almost to the floor, not quite. Coffee sip. Okay, these are the perfect 8x5 pieces.
on two of them. I'm going to cut them down. It's a quarter of an inch. No, I don't think I need to do that. Three sixteenths of an inch, I'm cutting them down. It's giving it room to fold. So I need another piece of 8x5. So let's take it to six. That gives us our little bit extra room to work with. I don't know if you guys want to stick with me through all of this. Uh, very sticky when it sticks to itself. Come on, buddy. Let go. Bottom sheet is the biggest one. The next one is going to go here. We want to give it a little extra space because it will have stuff on it and we need for it to be able to move. Don't do that so quickly. Oh, not perfect. You can tell this has a little bit wider, which means it's not going to fold even. on the inside. Now we can also cut this tape in half too. For these inside pieces. the six incher. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this here. Now this guy has to fold over two pieces. You know we're trying to make sure that we're leaving enough space that it doesn't do that. I think it's got enough space there though that we can work with that. It just needs a little training. A little extra fold in there. There we go. Okay. This guy is gonna come over the top. See look it. It's uneven. Outside, I want to do a full piece. I'm not sure why, just feels like I should.
Probably overkill. We know I do overkill. Not denying it. Nice and flat. And we're going to give this guy extra room. So look here, if we use this to line it up, now this piece of wrapper's tape is too big. I'm getting adhesive all over this scissors, thereby absolutely ruining it. This adhesive on this tape is serious. I'm sure some alcohol will take it off. Maybe. Why not even let me trim it? Come on, my man. Next time, make sure that you cut it to the right width. Seriously. Okay. So, we've got this lined up here. And if we line this guy up here, this guy's lined up here, well, then we've got to be straight. That's perfect. That one's absolutely perfect. So let's put this little piece in here. We'll do our scoring in here with our fingernail or score or a card or anything. We just want to make sure that that seam is nice and sticky and stuck down in there. This guy's the same thing. Alright, so here's the tent flap. Here will be the advertisement. Tent flap, advertisement, images. Got it? So now I just need to do that for all of the other ones. I need to um, make five more of these for the appropriate sizes. Uh, and I am going to uh, construct each one of these outside of the book and then I will glue them into the book at their appropriate spots. There, and then there. So they'll have a full, this will still be, you know, the, the tent will most likely be kind of cut here in some sort of tent shape or curtain shape. Uh, I still haven't really quite decided what I'm gonna do with the first uh, cover. It would be, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at this. Look at this. Now think about this. If I have this as a curtain shape, <laughs> look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, this is gonna be cool. If I have this as a curtain shape going like this, something similar to that. So you're gonna see through this. But then, when you flip up the tops, you will have this. And if I have all of these pages next to each other, <laughs> look what we make. Can you see what I'm doing here? We make the tents, the tops of the, the big top. We're mimicking again the um, the big top tent whenever, whenever you open up two sides together. And then actually this side could probably be a little bit, no, no, no. All of these should be the six inches over the top. So that 
every time that you open them, you get another peak of the tent. <laughs> I'll work on it. But yeah. And if I do it here low enough, I could do something, you know, some sort of wording up here. I'm not big on wording because it's a uh, finding the right wording is difficult. You know, I want to have something that's I guess I could probably try to draw out the wording, but I'm not very I'm not very skilled with that. Could make one side shorter than the other. We want to make sure that that goes the other way, though. So we would measure to the center. We would measure X amount of space down. We would take it to each corner. And that's how we would find our peaks of our tent. This will be definitely some sort of striped fabric up to this pot. So we want it to look like the actual, maybe a filigree up here. You're showing kind of the, the ridge of the tent. All right, so I'm not gonna hold you guys here while I'm doing the construction on all of these. You basically see what I'm doing. I'm gonna have to go through and uh, cut down some of these pieces uh, and cut more pieces, you know, to make this work correctly. Should be good, huh? It's going to take a while. So this is most likely video one, and in video one you received the cigar box. I hope to gosh this doesn't go on to ten videos. It's absolutely possible that it will. Because this is going to be very intense. All right, my beautiful people. Thank you so much for uh, waking up with me this morning. And uh, I need to go get ready for lunch. I get to go on a great uh, adventure with one of my good friends. Not a great adventure. To my favorite Greek restaurant. And it is so, so, so good. We're going to have a couple martinis. And uh, it'll be good. All right. Bye. We'll come back soon. We'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so I was just thinking about this. It was like a couple of minutes after what we just chatted. Like, okay, so what the problem is is that with the spacing that I have in between each of them, these aren't going to line up, and there'll be a gap in between each one, and it won't make sense, and then this one will be taller, and, you know, the next one's going to be shorter because it's a smaller. So I figured it out. Uh, because, uh, you know, the next page is a half, half inch or yeah, half inch shorter. So how was that going to work? So remember, I didn't know for sure whether I wanted to do this as a, <laughs> as a tent opening or as a curtain. So, and then I was thinking about, <laughs> so if it's a curtain, look at this guys, if it's a curtain, with a tassel for a pole handle. So actually I would make it go to here, right? Make it the point as long as possible. Put a rivet in here, put a tassel hanging from it so that you see to pick up that. And when you pick up that, then you get the single point of that particular tent. With a tassel on top. So you got your flags in there. It's like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna put Sue Ellen's flag in there? How am I gonna make the flag? And somebody else had mentioned the flag part. Maybe Faye. Uh, Faye, I haven't heard from you. I hope you're okay. Okay, don't worry me. So if I if I do this with the tassel, then each tent is its own little independent tent. 
So it would be a curtain on this side, like an envelope opening up. And then it's the flag tent. And each tent will have its own, uh, own pointiness to it. Technically kind of like this. Each tent is going to have its own, be its own little building. I think that's going to be the better solution. So yes, it's what's behind the curtain instead of what's inside the tent. And then the tent, the, the flaps will make the tent. And these flaps can be different heights too. I think that'd be kind of cool, kind of fun. You know, everybody has their own little separate space. All right, it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. I can use fabric on these. I can use, I'll probably use deli sheets because I need to make it some sort of stripe pattern. So that's the plan. All right, we'll chat soon. Bye. Good morning, artists. It is bright and early. Um, I've been working on construction on these guys. So I have all the pieces construction constructed. I have them covered with the base layer. Now you may be asking why would you go through all the work of putting the base layer on them? And the reason for it is, is since I want to use deli sheets, I want to have interest underneath of the deli sheet. If there's see-through parts, um, so for me, having, you know, this edge doesn't have to be perfect here, but I do want each of these to feel like a little individual tenty thing, I think. So I'm just kind of trimming away. So this is the inside that I've already covered with the base layer, because it is all about the base. I really offset my um, base because of the fact that I am looking for the interest. I'm looking for the diversity. I'm looking for those words uh, to, to be seen, but um, uh, I think it provides more interest if they're kind of uh, skewed around a bit. So where this fold is going to go down See, that one just cracked naturally. One thing about this gaffer's tape, uh, while it is a great holding, the Mod Podge doesn't always stick too great to it. So, uh, you know, be sure to use a lot of glue over the top of it. It does eventually stick. You just have to use a little bit extra glue and we're not gonna put it in there right now. We'll deal with that when we're putting on the deli sheets over the top. I don't mind that I have a little black bit here. Um, we'll be okay. So there's the inside. And I think this is the middle one. Again, I have two big ones, two middle ones, and two small ones. All right, well, this is gonna be our tent top. We're gonna have our advertisement, and we're gonna have our people. Times six. <laughs> because if I do it times one or two, we get, you know. Uh, so the parts that will be seen, so since this will be like this, we need to cover this, you know, hopefully the advertisements, not all of them are this big. Some of the advertisements are much smaller and I'm going to have to probably search for more ads, honestly. Uh, but some of them will be smaller. Uh, and if they're smaller, that means that this under base will be seen potentially. I don't know if it'll be seen. I really don't like to do things that are not um, productive to the end of the piece. Um, so I do feel as if there is a chance that you will see this lettering underneath of here. I'm using as big of pieces as possible, uh, still trying to create as much interesting shape uh, on that bottom layer. Uh, I think it's valuable. And again, I kind of enjoy offsetting them somewhat. Uh, because I think those, you know, 
the, the vertical words will create interest. The horizontal words, the diagonal words, the, the more mashed up, the better. And I'm running out of base layer here. Not that I don't have 500 books laying around. Um, it's just what's on my desk. So it's most likely that these middle pieces won't be seen, but if you don't have it down there and you decide to do, you know, what if midway through I changed my brain and, and the next thing I decided to do um, actually was just to paint over the words. Uh, it's much better to have something down there. It, um, it, hopefully it's not a completely unnecessary step. <sighs> Because I don't have time to waste doing this. <laughs> but this is my last one. So um, this will probably be the last video for part one of, uh, oh gosh, what are we going to call this? It's kind of, <laughs> we're going to be kind of the skid row tents. Uh, what are we going to call this? Help me name this, guys. Uh, it's going to have all the last of the curiosities. Yeah, I'll have probably another picture. Another bearded, uh, the oh, the wolf boy. There's the, the really tall guy. There's the... All those other things beyond just the fortune teller and the tattooed lady. Those are going to be two main ones. Um, what was that third large? Oh, 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 the bird girl. She was super cool. I'm looking forward to giving. Okay, that is, this is the back. This is what's going to be attached to the page here. We do not need to go any further than that. As long as we get, as long as we have that bend covered, that's what's important. Now, I'm trying not to... You bend that page too much, it does give you a wrinkle. I don't know which is the best way to deal with that at this point. So we're going to uh, also address the top. This will be the curtain that lays down that turns into the tent flap. Not sure how I'm going to construct that uh, to where you know, it is going to be an interactive thing, of course. These um, points slash curtains are going to be, you know, along our same color theme. Uh, they're going to be tent colors. Let's see if I have any other variety in here. Down to the smallest bits and pieces. Well, I had gone to um, Metro yesterday thinking that I would be able to get a dog by now, and I'm in this apartment for three more weeks, and I asked my landlord, and he said no. Um, and I have a huge deposit that I need to get back on this place. And, uh, yeah, he could avoid that deposit. So he's kind of got me there. Even though I would be home with the animal every single minute and would take the animal in the car with me. Um, yeah. Can't do it. So that was my sad news for yesterday. Part for the course, though. Yeah, you know, let's just. All right. So we have the inside covered already. Now we have the outside cover. So uh, hopefully we're done with this for a little bit. It's going to take a lot of glue this layout. And again, it's going to be a, a ten part. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can make it not be a 10 parter again. Um, so, we take this, 
this. This guy off. So this is interesting. This paper went extremely translucent. Hmm. This does not have to be perfect, but we are establishing the tent. Get this here. So this will get glued into the book here. Then we're gonna go here and here. We're gonna have to train it. And maybe we'll need a little magnet. I don't know. Uh, again, some sort of tassel or a flag coming off of here that you pull up. Here's the ad here. You pull it down and then you've got all your uh, fortune tellers. This will be the top of the tent. I might construct a, a border I think that'd be kind of cool. So it feels like it's kind of a, up on a stage. Things to think about. I think, oh. Uh, crackle paste on the background would be beautiful down here, wouldn't it? Uh, different stencils on each of them. Instead of uh, taking the deli sheet all the way through the back. Take the deli sheet on the top where it's going to be the tent. We know that that would be absolutely beautiful. We're going to take a lot of dry time if we need to do that. But with the, with the wording down, <clears throat> with the base layer, uh, and we take some of the um, spray stains and make sure we don't get it into the edges any more than it is. They say adolescence in this old book is 14 to 25 for males. Why would they say males at 25 are adolescents? <laughs> it's kind of surprising. You know, they would never refer to themselves as adolescent, of course. You know, you know they kind of are adolescents until they're in their 50s. Or do they ever stop? <laughs> Not all guys. Of course, some men are absolutely responsible and wonderful. And they just kind of always are the same little beings, aren't they? Not little. Same beings. Okay. That popped right off of that. Um, okay. This jar is really dirty. I just might just replace it and get a new jar. I save my jam jars, you know, from the kitchen. It's a great size. Yeah, I like this guy. And as I buy my gallon of Mod Podge, it does uh, really help to have something to spread it out with. Here. Let's spread it out. Make it usable. Okay, so um, I just wanted to turn uh, to bring you in here to show you uh, how I am uh, finishing up these uh, pieces. These flips, how they've turned out. Uh, I need to go through and just kind of trim up the edges on the other five. And then when I do that, we'll come back. All right, we'll chat soon.